Welcome everybody to another episode of Innovation Coffee. Today's going to be a really fun episode. Uh, I mean, the title today is simple, Arduino IDE 2.0. So everybody knows what we're talking about. It's going to be a really interesting interesting episode because we'll uh, get to hear from um, the, the two product owners of the Arduino IDE 2.0. So it's going to be uh, not just talking, but we're also going to be doing two demos uh, to actually show you some of the features of the of the latest ID. So I'm excited because uh, you know I, I've been using like probably everybody else on the on this call. I've been using Arduino for a while, and it's good to always see uh, new updates and new features coming coming our way. So I'm really really excited for this episode. But as usual, before diving into the episode, actually I should I should acknowledge that I'm I'm alone today. It's uh, it's just me. Robert is on holiday, so he left me here alone. But uh, we got two awesome guests with us. So uh, in a short um, a short while, we'll uh, we'll bring them on and we'll talk about Arduino. Um, but before that, I just wanted to give a short recap of what we did uh, uh, last week. So last week we had a um, cool episode with IoTech with the team at IoTech talking about uh, IoT and blockchain. Uh, the team talked about a special project that they've uh, developed called um, the Pebble Tracker. I was just looking at my notes. The Pebble Tracker, that is a, a really interesting project on uh, uh, crowd supply right now. So go check it out. And uh, as usual, we'll put the link to the previous episode in the description below. So if you haven't seen it already, you can watch it there. Um, but now it's time to actually bring our guests. So let me introduce to you Alessandro Ranellucci. Head of Maker Business Open Source and Community at Arduino, and Ubi De Feo, Creative Technologist, Product Owner of the Arduino IDE. So, welcome, guys. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank Hi, you. Alessandro. Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. It's great to have you on, and uh, I'm really excited for today. I'm, uh, you know, as I said, it's uh, it's interesting to to see an update uh, of the IDE and uh, and get to experience firsthand by by you guys showing us. Uh, by the way, I've tried it already. It's really cool. So um, I'm 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 really keen to to see the the Easter eggs and, and all the cool stuff you know that maybe I haven't I haven't seen when I tried it myself um, on the show today. So um, before that though, I'm I'm keen to kind of give you guys the the floor for a quick introduction as we usually do. But um, you know, as usual, I like for you guys to kind of give a bit of a uh, background before I do, you know, what, how did you guys get here? You know, how did you guys uh, get to this point in your career? How did you guys uh, choose to work at Arduino? Uh, and what brought you to this point? What brought you to building IDEs uh, for, for you know, as a job? Uh, I think that's interesting in its own in its own right. So I'll start with uh, Alessandro because I like the name. So Alessandro, you can <laughs> you can start first. Go ahead. <laughs> that's bias. It's good, bias, by the way. Choice, that's what we choice. call it. <laughs> no, yeah. So th thank you again. Well, my background here is, uh, well, I have a, a software background and uh, an interaction design. And then I've been a, an, an open source advocate for my entire life. I, I started developing software when I was a, a child. And then I discovered open source communities later. And then I spent uh, count countless time and nights, especially contributing to open source projects. And at some point, I made my, my own project, which was called Slicer with a three in the name. Some of you might, might know it because it, it's been a, uh, a popular software for 3D printing used uh, by, by many people. and. Uh, I spent about 10 years working on that and leading that, that, that open source project. And then later I did other things, other things until that, that time when I, I had the chance of joining the Arduino family, which is uh, which was like something like when your favorite band at some point calls you on stage to play the bass with them. And I said, okay, wow, me? Okay, I'm here. So I'm super excited uh, to, to be working in Arduino right now. I, I'm... Uh... I'm I'm concerned now because I said Easter eggs and we already got uh, actually sorry wrong 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 comment here we got the uh, we got I shot Jr um, one of my favorite get, one of my favorite um, people watching the show asking us for the Easter eggs now so sorry guys I, I put you on the spot here but I think I think Ubi you're gonna have some surprises so uh, we'll talk about that in a, a little bit um, but I'll I'll personally tell David that the Easter eggs arrive. On Easter Monday, when I'm you, sorry, you know. There you go. You, so you this is just wait. a, it's just a prequel. <laughs> but um, there's also again David saying that uh, you know, he he thinks this is a game changer. So, uh, 
so yeah, so for all of you that haven't uh, haven't seen the ID in live yet, uh, today you'll have a chance to see it. So before doing that, though, Ubi, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, well, my career starts around uh, six years old when I first took apart my my first electric uh, device. It was a remote control car. Uh, then I was introduced to computer with the Commodore sixty four. I started taking that stuff apart, breaking. And, and then I started breaking things until I learned how to fix things. Uh, and in 2006, by the end of 2006, uh, after quite a good career in uh, software web development, mostly, um, I was working for, you know, like big clients making interactive stuff on screen. I met Massimo Banzi and my, my life went from the screen to the physical world. And slowly I started teaching Arduino. I was one of the first uh, teachers of Arduino not belonging to the Arduino team. And after many years, you know, Massimo and I kept in, in touch uh, over and over. And then um, I think three years ago, he said, uh, we're ready to bring you in. And then I, uh, inside Arduino, I began designing some uh, circuits hardware. I designed uh, some of the, the, the famous uh, maker shields. Uh, then I've been part of the cloud team. Uh, I actually been one of the few people, the, the first people in the IoT cloud team. And then I been in marketing and then I became product owner of a CLI, Arduino CLI and the ID. And that's how I'm here tonight. Cool. Interesting, interesting background. And I, I love the fact we were talking beforehand. I love the fact that you guys both have... Um, a, diver a different, uh, you know, you got here from a different path, right? And I think uh, all three of us actually have different uh, life stories, different careers. And I, I probably, you know, most people do. Uh, but I think it's it's interesting um, to know that you can come to uh, working on software, working on electronics from different background. I, I always find that fascinating when I when I hear of new people uh, joining joining the fold. Ubi, but aren't you a physicist? You're a physicist, right? I am, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, yes. I started as a physicist, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So cool. Um, I guess, you know, I've got a lot of questions ready. Uh, should we start with a short introduction on uh, the Arduino ID 2.0 and perhaps like, you know, what brought you guys to um, going from uh, from the, the, the you know, the, the original ID to the ID 2.0? Uh, why not make changes to the new to the old ID? Uh, sorry, to the to the ID 1.0? And and uh, uh, come up with this other ID. Um, what brought you to this to this point? And you know, what is the um, the vision behind this new ID? If I can answer that, I will say that the the Arduino ID has served the Arduino community for a long time, for fifteen years. Uh, Two thousand five was the first uh, commit <laughs> for the Arduino ID. So it's a very mature product, but of course, during this time, we have been getting a lot of feedback from users and especially uh, requests for more advanced features coming from the more advanced Arduino users, which evolved from, from their first uh, steps into, the, into Arduino programming. So uh, at some point, we realized that we had to, uh, to rewrite uh, the, the Arduino uh, ID from scratch also to get rid of, of the Java legacy because the, the Arduino ID based on Java was uh, prompting us uh, with a number of issues, uh, uh, especially tied to the maintenance of a Java code base uh, on the newer operating systems uh, and uh, support for uh, high resolution monitors, support for a number of modern things uh, which uh, was uh, requiring too much effort on our side. So we, we, we said, okay, it's time to rethink the internal architecture of the Arduino ID from scratch. And we uh, did some, uh, some tests, we did some proof of concept, and that's, we, we even released for, for a while uh, a, few, uh, um, a few releases of, uh, of an alpha version of, uh, of, a, of a new ID based uh, on the new technology, and we get very positive feedback. Uh, we, we used to call that uh, the, the pro ID. So at some point we decided, okay, it's time to 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 go to on the on this route. And uh, so the that uh, proof of concept became the ID 2.0, which basically enables us to introduce a number of new features that we are going to to show uh, to tonight. If I can add, uh, I sure. think we we did a really good job in keeping the IDE 2.0 hidden behind the IDE 
pro moniker and uh, and what we basically focused on for months because this uh this transition from IDE 1.8 to IDE 2 which is still ongoing uh passing through IDE pro was basically we were shielded by the requests of pro users who were actually going into the github uh, repo and requesting features so we didn't have to give away the fact that we wanted to come out with Arduino 2.0 and which is in fact not a not a beginner only project. It's it's a re, it's going to be a future replacement for that one, but it's a pretty advanced uh, IDE. But it, it has a, an entry uh, an entry curve which is very, you know, like soft, and that's what we wanted to concentrate on. And and I wanted to for for all the you know our, our um, the people watching today and all the people that will watch later, I, I'm keen to um, stress an interesting point though. Uh, for all the ones that are still using the the Arduino 1.0, um, you know, you were telling me earlier that there is going to be you know support on on the bug fixing and all that on the Arduino 1.0, right? So, um, you know, if you want to, Alessandro, maybe you, you could share uh, kind of the roadmap or or at least give give people confidence that, um, you know, that, that Arduino uh, IDE is, is still supported. Yeah, of course, the Arduino, the Arduino IDE 1.0 is going to be supported for a while. It's it's, it's a robust product and, and there is a, a team maintaining it. So so don't, don't worry, it's not dead at all. Uh, we, we our plan now is to focus on uh, refining the the Arduino 2.0 uh, and releasing uh, uh, new updates very often. Ubi and the team released uh, today even a, a new update uh, three just three weeks after the first release. So they are running so fast thanks to the feedback coming from the community. And as soon as we see that the new ID is stable enough and the community confirms this. Uh, uh, we we uh, we will be ready to announce it uh, as, as as stable, uh, and that will probably happen hopefully within the next few months. But we will see together with the community um, when this can happen. Actually, yeah, and we already have someone using the beta four. Actually, uh, you can see from the chat. So the freshest eggs in the in the basket. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Awesome. And and another thing that I wanted to bring up is obviously you've got um you know a pro line uh, um called uh uh what well, you know the, the Portenta uh pro, right? And uh, I'm curious, does this ID is this ID also supporting uh that that product uh, right now? Is that uh, and if it's not, is there plans to support it in the future? Uh, I can, I can. Yeah, of course it supports, it supports all the boards that we manufacture, we design and manufacture. And uh, the nice thing is that pretty much it supports everything that is already supported in the IDE 1.x, so 1.8.13, because uh, basically we, we build on top of the, of the CLI and the CLI has support for everything. If there are minor glitches in some third party platforms, uh, we we basically receive feedback and uh, those are usually fixed on a, on a weekly basis because we're extremely active on the CLI when it comes to bug fixing and if it works with the CLI it automatically works in, on the ID and it also supports all the libraries all the libraries well, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so you're basically saying that it supports all the uh, all the current boards that are supported by the Arduino ID as we know it. Yes. Perfect. The the ecosystem uh, works as before. And uh, I had a friend of mine uh, last night and he said, look, I, I don't think that this is not, that this is an advanced product. It's a product that everyone can jump on exactly like they did with the original ID because it just, you install it and it works. So. People will notice uh, that also the user experience and the interface is very, very close to, to the ID 1.0, except for those tiny bits here and there that makes it more responsive and more advanced for users that are able to, uh, to leverage those advanced capabilities. So we did this job in keeping it simple for the basic users, uh, but uh, advanced and flexible enough for users who are a bit beyond the, the first steps, of course. Yeah, there's one very important point is that over over the past at least 10 years, there's been um, a buildup of literature, uh, tutorials, uh, courses, uh, books. We have like, I don't know how many books, it's countless. 
And we wanted to make we know sure that at least three thousand books mentioning the Arduino. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Three thousand books. So maybe even more. Uh, it seems to be like a famous project. Uh, but essentially, the thing is, if you have a tutorial that is uh, is developed anywhere after version one, you can kind of figure out where to find stuff. So th this was a very important key for us. Let's allow switchers or newcomers. Newcomers will go look for tutorials, will watch videos on YouTube. Let's allow these people to, to download a modern IDE, which is lean and fast, and use it by just Googling. So can you imagine if we had completely overhauled the UI and people would Google and say, hey, this is, you know, this is apple and oranges. So on one end, there is legacy. On the other end, there is uh, slowly introducing modern features and, uh, and approaches. Very interesting. And I like, you know, we'll, we'll dive into it uh, shortly, but, you know, it, it is very, uh, very user friendly, I have to say. And there is uh, some of the features. I think I like the fact that you've come out with, uh, you know, with a few uh, additional features uh, out of the right right away i guess and those are all made to uh, really support the user right like so rather than kind of um thinking about crazy features that perhaps uh will come later you've thought about the features that can actually help the developers uh from the get go right and i really like that because some of the stuff autocomplete is is you know one of the things that you expect on on a modern ide and actually you you've introduced it from from the start right so uh, so that's really helpful um right i think with that we could dive into the the demo unless you guys have something else you want to add uh to the introduction um part any any last any other things that you wanted to mention before we dive I, into uh, the demo i think people want want to see the demo and then we yes. can discuss later yeah yeah so let's yeah. do that and as, as usual if you've got any questions for anyone here uh feel free to post them in the chat and we'll take them uh live here so uh well i'll bring up Yes, there we go. This is all right. The... Uh, do you think that the the text zoom uh, is enough? I think so, right? Like yeah, I, mean, I think if, we can see it. Yeah, if I can see, the only thing is that my eyes are slow are slowly aging, so I'm gonna have to wear these, uh, <laughs> losing the allure. Uh, all right, so I have prepared. This is the new ID. Um, I you know like I have prepared like a very uh, basic scaffold uh, sketch with some simple things in here. Uh, and I have uh, two boards connected. I can actually show you. Well, uh, let's not show it now. I have an uh, Arduino Nano 33 IoT and a Maker Wi Fi 1010. Those are two boards based on the 7021G18, which is a, 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 an ARM M0 Plus, uh, Cortex M0 Plus. So it's a very uh, lean uh, the microcontroller, and uh, I came to, to like it a lot. Uh, and essentially, this is just a basic sketch. The first thing that you will notice is that, you know, like uh, before to select a board, you had to go all through the menu here and select the, the serial uh, port it was connected to. And now we introduce this new UI element, which basically, thanks to the fact that there is the Arduino CLI running in the background, it automatically keeps recognizing new boards that I connect or disconnect. So if I, for instance, disconnect the Nano 33 IoT, it disappears, and then the system gets notified when I re reselect it. But I can also select the Wi-Fi 1010, which I have installed on the other end. Uh, let's look at the code editor. Uh, another thing that might jump immediately to take, you know, grab your attention is this sidebar, which didn't appear in the previous uh, ID, in the Java ID. And then there is a, like an interesting button, which I'm going to demo for you later. But the buttons are all the same, except this debugger. So there's a bug slashed out. And uh, this interface is extremely useful compared to the other one. So let's see how we did it before say board i'm going to select an avr and then i'm going to i'm going to remember the family i'm going to remember the board that i want to use but what if i just want to work with an arduino mini and there you go you have selected you can select the the port uh and look at what happens so i have selected the mini but the system still knows that i have a nano 33 iot so i can just go there and it it replaces the thing what happens in the background is pretty much magic because like like more advanced uh, users may know arduino has a very simplified way of presenting code of exposing 
two uh, main methods, which are the setup and the loop. They both, for, for more advanced users or writers of C and C++, you know that behind the scenes, there's a main, there's the, the traditional main entry point. And inside the main entry point, there's a while. So the setup is, is uh, launched first. And in the while loop, it keeps repeating the loop. Uh, but all of this stuff, hiding the complexity or, let's say, the quirks of the C++ language and, and the frameworks that are behind it, and even the, 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 the ARM Cortex uh, headers, all that kind of stuff is hidden from the user, but it's still there. So the user can just come here and find this easily uh, approachable thing. But for people who program C++ and C, you know that you need forward declarations of functions. So the Arduino framework and the pre-compiling process does all of that for you. This means that when the code gets compiled, it is first assembled into some, magically, it is assembled into something that is way more complex code. And all of this happens thanks to a pre-compiling phase to uh, a language server. We have developed, uh, this is something unique that we don't, don't basically talk about much, but uh, we have developed the first language server that supports the Arduino framework. So a language server is, I, I knew that it was going to be hard, but I didn't know it was going to be that hard when we started. So now auto-completion on the Arduino IDE is just in there. I can use functionalities and invoke invoke the, the autocomplete. And I can say, you know what? I'm going to do digital write uh, pin 9, and I'm going to set it to output. And I can autocomplete everything, right? Or I can, initiate, I can initiate my serial port. I always forget the right key. Oh, come on. I must have made serial dot. Oh, I think I, I think I made some. Ubi, while, while you do that, I, I'm yes. just going to bring up a comment. I think I might know someone that worked on the language server here. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Roberto. <laughs> that's Roberto. He's, he's the, the team leader. Uh, but essentially, I, I keep pressing the wrong button well, here and I. Yes. While you figure that out, yeah, I can mention that uh, we did an architectural choice behind the scenes that is to uh, implement this IDE in the same architecture as uh, Visual Studio Code, which which uh, has set a standard uh, for components in IDEs. So uh, the, the the language server protocol is sort of a standard now. So what we did, and, and that powers the Arduino IDE 2.0 right now, uh, can be also reused uh, in other IDEs compatible with the language server protocol. Uh, and that they will support the Arduino framework and the Arduino APIs basically out of the box. And this applies also to other parts of the, of the IDE, like uh, the debugger, like the other components of the, of the IDE that will, uh, uh, since everything is open source, we haven't mentioned that, Alessandro, but it's worth remembering that all this is still open source. And so it will be possible to reuse it uh, easily on other IDEs uh, uh, by bringing the Arduino experience also in other environments, which could be more ca uh, custom to, to, to different environments. Sorry, Ubi, to... No, 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 no worries. <laughs> so, uh, no, anyway, I was trying to figure out why I couldn't bring up the, the, the definition, but yeah. So essentially, I can, uh, I can initialize my serial port now I've done it twice. So you can see that as I type, I can spot errors in the typing. But what's really interesting is still related to the language server, we can now go to the definition of something. And beginners or advanced people who want to learn the Arduino framework, they can go and figure out where stuff is behind the scenes. So if I'm interested in figuring out what does digital write do, right? It's a, it's a void function and it has these parameters. I want to see where it is defined and it is defined here. And then, you know, like you have all the framework behind the scenes. Uh, so I've got I have a question a, on this, uh, Ubi, please. While, while we're there. Um, so I know that underneath the Arduino uh, application uh, layer, there is uh, embed OS and, um, built in, right? So I'm curious, could you 
through that, can you actually access Embed OS functions as well? Um, just yes. a question came if up now. You, if you select an embed board, so let's say that I select the BLE, which I, for some reason, I don't have installed on this system. Uh, okay, then this is a new, it's a new machine. But essentially, it, I, I can tell from the gray that it's not uh, installed. What's really nice is that, okay, no, then I have it installed. Wait, huh? I have it. Okay, but it's not connected. That's why it's gray. Okay. So if I want to see, uh, for instance, where this is defined. It is defined here. I, I I need to find something that is part of the embed OS to to do this, and it's all augmented. So probably digital right will do something for me. Come on, just right click. Uh, sorry, I have a Mac trackpad that that well, no, it doesn't well, do right click. It's well, my yeah. computer. I, I, uh, Alessandro, to, uh, to in, also as Ubi was saying, if you select an, a board which is based on an embed core on, within the Arduino framework, you will be also able to access the embed API directly if you if you want something that is not uh, conveniently wrapped in the Arduino API. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so so if, the, if, if there is a wrapper, an Arduino wrapper, I imagine it will it will go to the Arduino wrapper. But if, yeah, if exactly. the Arduino wrapper is not there, it will showcase the exactly the exactly. Function. Um, that, that's that's super cool. Thank you. No, I mean this. You know, you guys could tell that this wasn't prepared. So, so thank you guys for answering on the fly. Uh, I appreciate that. For some reason here, like I cannot bring it up, but uh, essentially you can see that it suggests you, it sends you to the method themselves. So it has code hints and and suggestion. One feature that uh, a lot of uh, friends of mine like is the code folding. And I underestimated how useful it can be, but I use it all the time. So I, I've used uh, several editors uh, across, I don't know, Eclipse to Sublime Text to VS Code to Xcode. And when you don't have it, you miss it, especially when, you're lo when your code becomes really, really long. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, I, I can say let's just, uh, we have the nano IoT connected. Uh, let's upload this sketch. Uh, I don't know what I, oh yeah, be, oh, that's why I have the nano 33 BLE still selected. That's why I couldn't bring stuff up. Okay. So now it is uploading and okay. So let's look, for instance, I have a second tab here, which is a second file inside the sketch. And I have this, uh, function, which initializes the steering, uh, controlling server, right? I can do this. And uh, let's say that I can, uh, in here, I can import it. And then I can say, uh, I don't know, what was it? Init steer. In it. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm having a bit of a kerfuffle down here for whatever reason. Init. Uh, in it, uh, I don't think you've yeah. prayed to the demo gods before before the live stream. No, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. Uh, but I've actually I, I've tried the demo uh, before, and I don't know what I did wrong here. But yeah, there, there's an error here, so it doesn't like something, which can happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, let's try it on the on the Wi Fi ten ten. Maybe on line nine, you should write high instead of output. Oh could my be, God, that's why I broke <laughs> it. Could be a, a background okay. compilation issue. <laughs> yes, it definitely is. It, uh, it be, it, because it can be, can, could be nice to share how it works behind the scenes that basically, if you look uh, at the bottom left of the screen, you see that there is a, a little spinning wheel when uh, Ubi types. Uh, and that means that yeah. while he types, uh, the sketch gets recompiled behind the scenes in order to extract all the symbols. Uh, so if I guess uh, if this compilation fails, uh, the new symbols are not uh, recognized. And, uh, right to be. Yeah, exactly. Right. And actually, the funny thing is that the glasses were not enough. I wasn't able to see that there was an error. Thank you so much for spotting that, because we do this every day, but we make the same mistakes over and over. So now I'm able to use a functionality that is in here, right? So I can say, because this is a functionality that returns an integer, I can just say, uh, it, oh. What am I typing? 
this Apple trackpad under my hand is not serving me well. So in uh, steering initialized is equal steering wheel. And let, let's stop here for a second, okay? And let's upload this one again. But let's look at an interesting uh, feature that we have here, which is the possibility to debug uh, the, the code as it is running on the microcontroller in real time. So Arduino users are used to debugging with the uh, serial monitor, you know, or just LEDs or displays. But sometimes you want to have a deeper look inside the microcontroller. So what I have done here, I have set up, uh, you see my camera. So I have set up a Nano 33 IoT, a, a Maker Wi-Fi 1010. Those are two kind of flagship boards from Arduino that have Wi-Fi wi connectivity and BLE. This one is connected to the serial, uh, to the USB port, so serial, and I can do the, the uploading via uh, bootloader, but it is also connected to an Atmel uh, ICE, which is an in-circuit emulator debug adapter and, uh, and uh, programming adapter. And I also have a Sager uh, J-Link. So essentially, this one can act as a debugging uh, adapter, so following the protocol from OpenOCD, it can allow me to control the chip and basically pause into the execution of a program. And how do you do that? Well, one special thing that you need to do to make sure that you have debug symbol enabled in the firmware, you need to optimize for debugging. That's one thing that we require the user. We're trying to automate all of this, but essentially what you need to do, you need to have a locally compiled firmware that the, the, the debug server is going to tap into in order to make sure that you can see the code as you debug. So I've already uploaded. I can launch the debugger. You can see that this icon is active. It means that it is clickable. So what is happening, the first thing that it does, uh, the adapter resets the microcontroller and it gets into this reset handler. But as soon as we look at our code, we can say, you know what? I want to see what happens here. What is returned from uh, this init steer uh, function? Uh, but init steer now doesn't do anything. So there is no return, right? So like I made a mistake here. I did not return a value. And I know that uh, some, some, uh, some platforms, uh, when they compile, they do not necessarily return zero or one if there is no return functionality. This is this is a bug that I have made several times on my code uh, because you can't keep track of everything. So right now we are here. This is the header. And I can slowly, you can see that I have some, uh, who knows debuggers, knows these symbols. Continue execution, step over. So go to the next instruction or step into, or, you know, we're just going to do play. And play is going to bring us uh outside of the cortex handler so the thing kept executing and i can't control it anymore ah, it's here <laughs> okay so uh i'm gonna go here i have a, a breakpoint i'm gonna play this oh this has already happened it's in setup so i don't i cannot stop here anymore right i'm gonna stop here and i will uh i will restart my debugging session. Let me look at the, where is my debugger? It's gone. Okay, well, definitely not prepared. And well, definitely I prepared, I just, just not doing it. Okay, let me start this one again. Okay. While you do that, actually, uh, one thing I wanna tell, um, I, want, I want to share with everyone, if if uh, people, given that this is a beta, right? So just kind of, I wanted to highlight that as well. Um, if anybody finds uh, issues, bugs, how can they report them? Uh, they can go to the GitHub repo, but also in the forum. We have a new forum uh, section. Alessandro knows all about it. Yeah, exactly. I, I guess, Alessandro, you are sharing the link to the blog post announcing and describing all the uh, new features of the IDE 2.0. And from there, there is a link to the forum where people are actively reporting all the all the bugs and they are 
not only using the, the, the new ID, but also stress testing it, which is a very valuable contribution right now. Uh, uh, so, so th yeah, that's the place, yeah. But also, I, let me say, Alessandro, that uh, contributors are very, very welcome because this is an open source project. Everything happens on GitHub, and even the, the developer team, Ubi and the team, work daily on GitHub. Everything happens in the public. So even the interactions between, uh, between the team members happen in public uh, issues with comments, uh, revisions, and so on. So uh, everyone can jump into the development process by suggesting uh, uh, improvements, new features, but also uh, by working on the code. And everything here is written in TypeScript. The front-end side of the new ID is written in TypeScript, uh, which is probably a bit more accessible than the old Java of, of, the, of the previous AD, while the backend part of this AD, as uh, Ubi said, uh, is, is uh, based on the CLI and other common line tools, uh, which are written in Go, in Golang. So these are the two languages for everyone who wants to jump in the development and contribute. Awesome. And if, if uh, I mean, this is another interesting point, actually, that I wanted to raise. If anybody is interested, you know, if anybody is an expert in develop, developing IDEs or, or in, uh, uh, you know, wants to get involved with Arduino, what are the, what is the help that you need right now? Is there any specific features or, or things that uh, people should look at? Oh yeah, uh, good, very good question. That depends, of course, on the level of, uh, I would say, of, of, of skills of, of, uh, of each one. Uh, but I, I'd say there are tasks for everyone because uh, uh, mm, uh, one very uh, helpful activity that people can do is to jump on testing activities because there are issues, issue reports by other users saying, hey, this doesn't work on my machine and so on. It is very useful if other people can do the same test and share whether they can reproduce the issue or not. This is already something very useful. Then people can jump on development and actually pick the simple, simplest tasks in the issue tracker uh, and uh, and work on, on, on them. We usually leave uh, uh, some of the simplest uh, tasks uh, there in the issue tracker because they are low hanging fruits for newcomers and contributors. So it's a good opportunity for, for, for newcomers. And then of course, if, uh, if someone uh, feels they, they can uh, work on more complex tasks, uh, uh, they will find plenty in the issue tracker. Uh, so the, their, the recommendation there is to first jump into the discussion before start writing code as, in order to make sure the, the, the direction is, uh, is aligned with the, with the project roadmap. Awesome. Hey, uh, Sorry, I we, we no, I found the issue. I found the issue. I was targeting the, the maker. <laughs> Sorry, two boards to the same thing. I was targeting the Maker 1010, which is connected to the J-Link, and I was running the debugger for the 33, which is connected on the Atmel ICE. So I made a complete mess and a fool of myself. So let me just uh, launch You're fine. I mean, we, we always appreciate people running live demos, right? I mean, I've done it before. It's really hard. So, so you know, I, I appreciate how hard it is, and, and you never know what's going to happen when you actually but, do it live. So you so have thank to you consider. <laughs> I have I have tried this uh, before with Roberto. Uh, we we done it like uh, around four thirty or something, and this happened the last time that we did a demo, by the way. So as well, everything worked before. So okay, now I have selected the right board. Uh, you can all see that it is connected to the Atmel ICE, but it will be programmed through the bootloader. In the process, I actually overwrote the Nano 33 that I had before, so I can't use it until I, I restart, <laughs> restart the bootloader. All right, so uh, playing with debuggers is, uh, is a dangerous game. So what I'm going to do, uh, I will upload the, the code, making sure that Optimize for Debugger is selected. It is uploaded. Now I can click the Debug button. And you can see that now the, the debugger starts. Uh, and it should, it should be available. Mm, no. And uh, yeah, but I can't see the, the debugger light. Is red. Is red. So the debugger is not alive. I think at attaching two debuggers at the same time <laughs> is a very yeah. advanced demo. 
and many things can go wrong. Oh look! Oh yeah. Okay. Now I did. I disconnected the other one, and this one came back to live. So, uh, okay. Let's try I like. Again. I like the fact that in a in a company such as Arduino, um, you know, even the even the uh, I'm, I'm going to get your title again, Alessandro. What, what is it? Uh, head of maker business. So even the head of maker business uh, is actually technical. It can help the, the engineer yes. debug right live on a, on a, on. A, on a yes. live stream. So it's a I love that, right? Everybody's technical. <laughs> Alessandro, it's a okay. matter of passion. <laughs> and it's a matter of passion. And uh, in the end, we face this stuff every day, multiple times. Okay, so now the debugger has started. I can see this debug console here, which I can send commands to. I can uh, list, uh, I can list code, right? I can list the main, I can list the setup. There are some people that are inclined to using uh, the debugger in a, in a terminal session I have learned uh, myself. So now we are in the starting thing, but when I continue execution, it is going to pause here where I previously set a breakpoint. This breakpoint allows me to inspect the call stack and the local variable. Right now I have a local variable, which is uh it's it's int and it is about to be declared right so what i can do i can go and inspect what's coming back from this function and what i can do i can step next but let's do one thing let's make sure that i know what my uh variables i keep track of my variables i can add watch uh, a watch expression for one of my global or local variable. Right now I'm about to leave the setup. As you can see, after this, the setup is over. So I will not be able to track anything after this. There is no code. So what I'll do, I will track the state of my feedback LED state variable, which is a global that I have up here. So now it is set to false because this is what I did in the beginning, right? And I'm going to continue execution and I'm going to stop here. So I will continue here and I will try and do digital write. So I'm expecting to set that LED which is on board and you will see it here. It's a, You don't really see it yet, but it's a tiny LED here. It is off, right? So what I can do, I can move over so I can step over and I go to a second function that says turn it off. So you can see that all the time, as I keep playing here, the LED will always be off because feedback state is off. But what I can do, I can change this variable, which is just an area of memory. And I have it somewhere here. I can say, you know what? I want it to be true. So there is no code that actually changes this value, but I'm physically changing the content of a register of a memory location inside this so what will happen now is the next time i press uh the the continue button this function will write a state of true which is an on and then it will i can do step over now the led you saw it like it's dim but you see it it has been activated by the fact that i have modified the real memory the real ram inside the microcontroller. What else can we do? Well, we can step into a function and see what happens inside the code. This command tells you, okay, step into the definition. And this is the definition of the digital write command. And I can keep stepping into and see what this macro GAPI, uh, sorry, GAP in description. It's a function that maps the pins to the to the to the internal hardware of the microcontroller and then you know i can step inside once again right and i can step over and i can track we still don't have support for two important things which are the cortex peripherals and the cortex registers there are some files called uh, uh, cortex definition tables something like this that you can put into this debugger and then you can see the current state of every register every peripheral if you have an SPI peripheral initialized, you can actually see the state of every part of the peripheral. You can see the state of DMA, RAM, and everything else. So let's continue. And what happens, we go back here. 
but I want to stop this and I want to see what happens here. I want to create a new function that is, uh, I don't know, void move uh, left. And then I can say steer and I can autocomplete dot. It suggests me to do a right. And when I move left, I just want to turn to zero degrees. Uh, yeah, I'm not good with the keyboard today. I'm sorry. And then something that we recently fixed, we we had a we had a a bug on the on the auto format, and we had to implement CLang uh, for CLang format for the formatting. So it follows the rules. People are going to be able to customize their formatting code formatting experience entirely. Something that wasn't possible with uh, with uh, a style in the in the former ID. So now I have this, and what I can do, I can just say, you know what? Uh, if feedback LED state, or if it's true, uh, I can do steer. Uh, no, what did I call that? Uh, I don't remember. I think I call this still left. Oh, move left. Sorry. That's why I couldn't autocomplete. Move left. So if the LED is on, my server is going to turn. And because this way I can show you how I jump into another function. Uh, we have stopped the debugging. I'm going to upload. This is almost the end of the demo. But I want to show you that you can uh, uh, fail to... Okay, what did, what did I do? I was in a debug stats state, so my processor is halted and it cannot receive data over the bootloader. So I just go there. And these are things that you, you learn. There is no easy way to do this. Uh, but you learn the trade as you move forward. So let's upload this. Is there a guide this. for debugging, uh, for helping people to get started with debugging? It's almost ready. Uh, we are revisioning the first debugging guide. The nice thing about it is that we start with a basic debugging guide. Um, our content department is working on it with pictures, photos, you know, like everything that you need to uh, pin out. And then we'll slowly move forward because if you see what I have here, I have a I have a pogo pin based jig that I built myself. And we are planning because people who want to use the, the nano series, they can, uh, they can there, was a, there was a prototype board. <laughs> uh, there are these five pins, which are the, the serial wire debug, the SWD pins. And you can tap into those. You can solder wires or you can build a nice jig and have the board uh, be removable, and then you just uh, put it on. I have a fixation for electronics jigs, actually jigs of every type. So, uh, all right, so now this code is uploaded. I have a breakpoint here, breakpoint here, and I'm gonna show you something else. So let's assume that I don't care about this breakpoint anymore right now. So right now, I can just disable it. From here, I have a list of breakpoints. This breakpoint is now gray, which means that the first time I hit the continue button, I know that this one works for me. What I don't know, well, what I didn't see, I, I didn't show you that I wasn't returning anything. So let's just uh, re -return, uh, return uh one, okay? So this is fine. I'm going to do this. I'm going to upload again, because I made a change. And then I'm going to hit the debug button again. But I can also just, you know, reopen this because the nice thing is that the configuration for the debugger is created on the fly, depending on how a developer has implemented the, the debug settings and the, and the support for debugging. It's still experimental, and you will see it from here. So essentially, implementing debug on a platform means just a few lines of code because the tools are pretty much all already there. We provide open uh, ARM Noni ABI uh, GDB and all the other open OCD. We already provide them uh, in the standard uh, Arduino tools. Uh, so essentially, now the configuration has been generated and a new one will be generated if I choose another platform target. So what I do now, when I hit continue, I skip this breakpoint, which is disabled for now. And you know what? After this time, I can just disable it. So I do not keep uh, bumping into this. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to step over. I'll go to the next line. Step over. Feedback LED state is false. 
So my move left will never happen. When I do step over, it is going to entirely skip what's going on, right? So what I can do is this. I'm going to do something funny. I'm going to put another breakpoint. This platform supports four hardware breakpoints. That's your limit. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here. And if I if I hit, now the, the, the code is running in the CPU, right? It's just spinning. And the, I have no chance of continuing because it's uh, I can pause the execution. Look what happens. And at this moment, it was doing a digital write. So I can just play this uh, kind of a slot machine game, right? I pause it. Where is it? Oh, why? It's in, it's in another, it's in the wire, wire in digital thing. See, so if you want to play a uh, debugger slot machine with your, with your friends and guess which function you go into it, you can do it. So what? Now it's ePort. Did I win something? All right. Uh, jokes aside, let's go back in here. So this feedback state LED, uh, when the thing continues to run, I have, uh, you know, like uh, it never ends up in here. But what I can do, I can just say, oops, I can just uh, pause it somewhere, go to my global variables and just say, you know what? This variable better be true because I want to end up in there. So true, I said it. And when I play, this is where it stops because now this condition is verified. I have modified the memory to make sure that it bumped into this. Then I can step into and go into my function and I can examine the content of server. Server is of class type server. And then, you know, like there are all the parameters and everything else that I need. Uh, but I can also, you know, I don't know, I can jump to definition here. It's unnecessary because it's here. Uh, and uh, and that's pretty much about it. I mean, I don't have much to add on this, but it's uh, it's it's very fun. If you wanna, if you're like a slightly more advanced user and you want to learn how a microcontroller works, I think uh, learning how to use a debugger and uh, literally digging into the microcontroller is a good thing to do. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you, Ubi. And, uh, and you know, again, appreciate the fact that you run a live demo, you didn't do a video and, uh, you know, as usual, things can go wrong, but you know, that's, that's part of the, of the fun. And actually I like the fact that Al Axel said, um, <laughs> he said, so happy that these debugging glitches happen with experts as well. I think, you know, it's always good to like show that actually even, even experts like you can, can make mistakes, right? I mean, or or things can go wrong because sometimes like it's beyond us, right? Like it's beyond what you do and what you plan. Um, so, so you know, yeah, I think that's, I, that's always a good uh, a good lesson. I want to show one more thing. So, like I said, basically this is important, although we're not documenting this yet. So, uh, platform developers they write the implementation for the debug functionalities, which means that by default we have chosen to use the Atmel ICE as a debug uh, adapter. But if I want to use a Sager or a Blackmagic probe or even, you know, like something that costs a lot more than this, uh, like Lauterbach, right? I could implement Lauterbach, S trace and everything. I can just configure my, uh, my debugging functionalities. So I have here an example. I provided the facility. It's not very Arduino-like yet, but we're working on a UI for this. But essentially, if you write your debug custom uh, JSON file to configure it, you can choose the server type and where the executable is. So to use a Sager, I would use JLink GDB server, and the server type is JLink, and I just tell, hey, the, the target platform is this one. So what happens is in here is that automatically upon launch, of uh, the debugger, you have a configuration file. All the the fields that you override from that custom JSON file replace the ones in here before the launch is executed. So uh, very advanced users, and we're going to write tutorials for this, are going to be able to use their own debugging adapters to debug their own microcontrollers, even though we don't, I mean, if even if they're not, supported out of the box, they could, in theory, debug a platform that a developer hasn't uh, implemented support for debug yet. So we, we made sure that this ID is beginner friendly, but trust me, when you go dig, uh, it, it's very powerful. And one of the most liked features, uh, we now support teams. 
So you, you have code folding, you have teams to, for your strain eyes because you code 16 hours a day. And, uh, and we have a, a much more powerful uh, UI. And you, Alessandro, know something about it because, you know, like we, we share the, the back end with Embed Studio. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think this is, uh, it's cool because it's actually using another open source project called Thea, right? It's all yeah. based on, on Thea. Yeah. Um, so that's that's super cool as well. Uh, guys, we got a couple of questions. Uh, I'm conscious that Please. we're running out of time, so I want to make sure that we, we answer those questions before um, before switching off. Um, okay, so there is there is someone, uh, actually someone asked about the, the dark feature, so you just showed how to do that, so, yeah. uh, so thank you for that. Um, there is Voita, Voita that says, can you recommend any interesting Arduino project for my secondary school professional activity? So I wonder if we've got if you guys got a link to education resources that um, that he can he can access. Well, yeah. it, that depends on uh, his, the level or uh, the skill level. Uh, but I would suggest to browse Project Hub, which is a nice source of inspiration for everyone, uh, so that they can pick uh, the project they, they 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 can and want to do. Cool. Thank you. Um, there is there is a couple of questions actually <clears throat> on. Um, on the ID or the debugging features, one second, okay. Um, so here there's one from Eric saying, does Arduino have a timeline for Pogo pin connector for an external debugger for the Nano 33 family? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not, yes. a, not a timeline to announce today, but uh, that, that's gonna come soon, yeah. yeah. So I think the first thing we'll do, we'll release a, we'll release a tutorial on Project Tab to build your own. You know, but definitely, you know, we we are curious to see what people actually want from this platform because the, the 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 debugger is something completely new for us. I mean, not for us as users of debuggers because many of us have been using them for years, but in the IDE, it's something that users have been requesting for over a decade, uh, and uh, we just came up with something new. So we 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 want to see what people like, what people don't like, how hard it is to use. Mostly, we we need data from user's experience. Cool, and then there's another one um, here that says, are you planning to add serial plot inside IDE uh, 2.0? It's coming. Yes, so the thing is this, uh, in this transition, we moved from Java to uh, web-based technologies, right? And uh, uh, all these kind of tools for the, for the uh, legacy IDE, they're built in Java and they leverage a plugin system that we developed many years ago in Java. So we are looking into the most used ones uh, and one of them is the serial plot and schools use it, people who actually do, uh, I don't know, sensors, you know, like uh, uh, BPMs, uh, and, and that kind of stuff for heartbeat sensors, uh, they want these tools. You know, people who do, you know, like data gathering and visualization want these tools. So this is definitely something that has always been part of this, always like for many years has been part of the standard tools. So this will be pro possibly one of the first things to come. Cool. And then, uh, you know, I've got another question, actually. Uh, we talked before about contributing, if anybody is interested. Uh, we said that there is a forum where people can see um, what's happening in, uh, obviously, GitHub. Uh, I wonder, do you guys have a, a roadmap that's public, or are you planning to share a public roadmap on, on new features? Uh, is that coming? Can we expect that? Can we expect to see that? Well, what is public is the, is the issue tracker on GitHub, which uh, lists everything, and you will see the activity on each single issue or task, uh, uh, and that that's basically what what what's gonna be in the in the releases. We we can probably say that we we are trying to keep uh, the pace of one release per month on average, uh, because we want to feed the community with new releases so that they can test uh, quickly and provide us with feedback. And this is going to happen for the for the next few months until we we get to a stable release. Yeah, I also want to say that today the first contribution to the ID has been merged. So Very we nice. had a user. <laughs> yes, we had a we had a bug filed by me, and this this user just said, "Oh, this is easy for me." So he he went through the effort of being able to build the, the ID locally, and he fixed it, and we merged it. So for us, it's the first. It's like a massive milestone for us, you know, first public contribution. 
And I wanted to say, actually, um, you know, we talked we talked about this in previous streams, but I think it's always important to say uh, to users or, uh, watching this that are not familiar with uh, open source, perhaps, or, or contributing to open source. One of the easiest way to get started is usually documentation. So I wonder, do you guys have uh, or need help for documentation around the IDE, for example, that uh, new new developers could start with to to contribute? Is that are you accepting contribution for documentation? Actually, maybe that's the question. Yeah, for yeah. everything. So uh, we that, have, that's always we have a, yeah we have a pretty thorough documentation for most of the stuff that comes from our teams. Uh, for the ID, we have already started writing tutorials, uh, and there's going to be more and more. They're going to come staggered. And uh, the nice thing is that we are working with in t on tutorials that basically detail the fine transition from the legacy ID and and the new one, which is going to be easy. But it's nice to see the new features. I actually didn't didn't show the new library manager and the new board manager, but you know, people can find them pretty easy on the left. So just I, always look left. <laughs> if, if someone wants to contribute a tutorial about something, maybe, uh, I don't know, some advanced user who is uh, knowledgeable in debugging or, 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 or something yeah. else, they can contribute it to Project Hub, which is the community platform of Arduino where tutorials can be published with all the code, code uh, samples, instructions, and yeah. so on. Awesome. Well, guys, we, we reached the, the top of the hour. Um, I'm conscious of everybody's time. And I want to uh, make sure to give you a chance to say any last things you want to mention. I'll, I'll uh, uh, share again the, the announcing blog where you can find um, the download link of the new ID and the forum uh, where you could you know, raise your uh, questions or anything else. So yeah, guys, uh, the floor is yours. Any last words? Well, I, I just want to thank you, Alessandro, for, for being the, the host in the, this nice night. I uh, was very happy to showcase this uh, work, which was very, very long, very exciting, very important also for, for, for the entire Arduino team. Um, I, I invite everyone to test the ID, provide us with a lot of feedback, even 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 reports, issue reports, uh, everything. We, we criticism, we, we want any kind of, of feedback and uh, have fun. And one last message I want to say, all this uh, effort in developing open source tools for everyone is possible uh, thanks to people supporting Arduino and buying original Arduino boards. Uh, when you buy an original Arduino board, you are supporting all this effort in developing open source that everyone uses around the world, also using other boards, other technologies, but still centered on the Arduino framework. So re remember this and help us uh, continue uh, uh developing tools for everyone thank you yeah thank you alessandro it's a little, really nice words it's been a, it's been a long journey to be honest and uh, i'm super happy that i was able to run this demo tonight with you uh for your audience which is uh very knowledgeable and uh very critical we actually appreciate criticism when it helps us make a product better so thank you so much yeah and actually i wanted to remind everyone that um that actually we have, uh, well, we have, I mean, we all have as a, as a world of, uh, of Arduino fans, we have uh, Arduino uh, Day next coming up next week, right? Uh, yes. Are you guys doing anything fun for Arduino Day? It's going to be the 16th birthday of Arduino, so March 27th. Arduino Day uh, all over the world. If you go to the website day.arduino.cc, you will find a map with a lot of dots all around the world, all events, of course, this year. They are they are being all online events, but this is uh, our worldwide live streaming uh, with the guests from all over the world showcasing uh, cool projects. And of course, as usual, we will be announcing some new things. Yes. Cool. I'm gonna. This is the link to the Arduino Day. So yeah, check it out. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. And actually, we have a live stream next week with uh, Kwabena. Uh, the the creator of OpenMV that will obviously talk also about Arduino because of the collaboration with Arduino. So uh, so that's going to be in uh, in uh, kind of uh, you know to, to celebrate Arduino Day on on this uh, live stream. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you so much, Alessandro and Ubi, for uh, participating tonight and for sharing uh, with us what you've built. It's it's always great to see uh, updates to the Arduino family and Arduino IDE as well. Uh, so thank you so much. And thank you to all the people watching tonight. It's uh, It's been fun. I, I had a lot of fun. And guys, again, um, thank you so much for, for being here with us. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, everyone.
It's nice seeing you again. 